a remembered dream by henry van dyke read for dreams collection one stories and poems this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. a remembered dream by henry van dyke this is the story of a dream that came to me some five and twenty years ago it is as vivid in memory as anything that i have ever seen in the outward world as distinct as any experience through which i have ever passed not all dreams are thus remembered but some are in the records of the mind where the inner chronicle of life is written they are intensely clear and veridical i shall try to tell the story of this dream with an absolute faithfulness adding nothing and leaving nothing out but writing the narrative just as if the thing were real perhaps it was who can say in the course of a journey of the beginning and end of which i know nothing i had come to a great city whose name if it was ever told me i cannot recall it was evidently a very ancient place the dwelling houses and larger buildings were gray and beautiful with age and the streets wound in and out among them wonderfully like a maze this city lay beside a river or estuary though that was something that i did not find out until later as you will see and the newer part of the town extended mainly on a wide bare street running along a kind of low cliff or embankment where the basements of the small houses on the water side went down below the level of the street to the shore but the older part of the town was closely and intricately built with gabled roofs and heavy carved facades hanging over the narrow stone paved ways which here and there led out suddenly into open squares it was in what appeared to be the largest and most important of these squares that i was standing a little before midnight i had left my wife and our little girl in the lodging which we had found and walked out alone to visit the sleeping town the night sky was clear save for a few filmy clouds which floated over the face of the full moon obscuring it for an instant but never completely hiding it like veils in a shadow dance the spire of the great cathedral was silver filigree on the moonlit side and on the other side black lace the square was empty but on the broad shallow steps in front of the main entrance of the cathedral two heroic figures were seated at first i thought they were statues then i perceived they were alive and talking earnestly together they were like greek gods very strong and beautiful and naked but for some slight drapery that fell snow-white around them they glistened in the moonlight i could not hear what they were saying yet i could see that they were in a dispute which went to the very roots of life they resembled each other strangely in form and feature like twin brothers but the face of one was noble lofty calm full of a vast regret and compassion the face of the other was proud resentful drawn with passion he appeared to be accusing and renouncing his companion breaking away from an ancient friendship in a swift implacable hatred but the companion seemed to plead with him and lean toward him and try to draw him closer a strange fear and sorrow shook my heart i felt that this mysterious contest was something of immense importance a secret ominous strife a menace to the world then the two figures stood up marvellously alike in strength and beauty yet absolutely different in expression and bearing the one serene and benignant the other fierce and threatening the quiet one was still pleading with a hand laid upon the other's shoulder but he shook it off and thrust his companion away with a proud impatient gesture at last i heard him speak i have done with you he cried i do not believe in you i have no more need of you i renounce you i will live without you away forever out of my life at this a look of ineffable sorrow and pity came upon the great companion's face you are free he answered i have only besought you never constrained you since you will have it so i must leave you now to yourself he rose into the air still looking downward with wise eyes full of grief and warning until he vanished in silence beyond the thin clouds the other did not look up but lifting his head with a defiant laugh shook his shoulders as if they were free of a burden 
he strode swiftly around the corner of the cathedral and disappeared among the deep shadows a sense of intolerable calamity fell upon me i said to myself that was man and the other was god and they have parted then the multitude of bells hidden in the lacework of the high tower began to sound it was not the aerial fluttering music of the carillon which i remembered hearing long ago from the belfries of the low countries this was a confused and strident ringing jangled and broken full of sudden tumults and discords as if the tower were shaken and the bells gave out their notes at hazard in surprise and trepidation it stopped as suddenly as it began the great bell of the hour struck twelve the windows of the cathedral glowed faintly with a light from within it is new year's eve i thought although i knew perfectly well that the time was late summer i had seen that though the leaves on the trees of the square were no longer fresh they had not yet fallen i was certain that i must go into the cathedral the western entrance was shut i hurried to the south side the dark low door of the transept was open i went in the building was dimly lighted by huge candles which flickered and smoked like torches i noticed that one of them fastened against a pillar was burning crooked and the tallow ran down its side in thick white tears the nave of the church was packed with a vast throng of people all standing closely crowded together like the undergrowth in a forest the rude screen was open or broken down i could not tell which the choir was bare like a clearing in the woods and filled with blazing light on the high steps with his back to the altar stood man his face gleaming with pride i am the lord he cried there is none above me no law no god man is power man is the highest of all a tremor of wonder and dismay of excitement and division shivered through the crowd some covered their faces others stretched out their hands others shook their fists in the air a tumult of voices broke from the multitude voices of exultation and anger and horror and strife the floor of the cathedral was moved and lifted by a mysterious ground swell the pillars trembled and wavered the candles flared and went out the crowd stricken dumb with a panic fear rushed to the doors burst open the main entrance and struggling in furious silence poured out of the building i was swept along with them striving to keep on my feet one thought possessed me i must get to my wife and child save them bring them out of this accursed city as i hurried across the square i looked up at the cathedral spire it was swaying and rocking in the air like the mast of a ship at sea the lacework fell from it in blocks of stone the people rushed screaming through the rain of death many were struck down and lay where they fell i ran as fast as i could but it was impossible to run far every street and alley vomited men all struggling together fighting shouting or shrieking striking one another down trampling over the fallen a hideous melee there was an incessant rattling noise in the air and heavier peals as of thunder shook the houses here a wide rent yawned in a wall there a roof caved in the windows fell into the street in showers of broken glass how i got through this inferno i do not know buffeted and blinded stumbling and scrambling to my feet again turning this way or that way to avoid the thickest centres of the strife oppressed and paralyzed by a feeling of impotence that put an iron band around my heart driven always by the intense longing to reach my wife and child somehow i had a sense of struggling on then i came into a quieter quarter of the town and ran until i reached the lodging where i had left them they were waiting just inside the door anxious and trembling but i was amazed to find them so little panic-stricken the little girl had her doll in her arms what is it asked my wife what must we do come i cried something frightful has happened here i can't explain now we must get away at once come quickly then i took a hand of each and we hastened through the streets vaguely staring away from the centre of the city presently we came into that wide new street of mean houses of which i have already spoken there were a few people in it but they moved heavily and feebly as if some mortal illness lay upon them their faces were pale and haggard with a helpless anxiety to escape more quickly the houses seemed half deserted the shades were drawn the doors closed 
but since it was all so quiet i thought we might find some temporary shelter there so i knocked at the door of a house where there was a dim light behind the drawn shade in one of the windows after a while the door was opened by a woman who held the end of her shawl across her mouth all that i could see was the black sorrow of her eyes go away she said slowly the plague is here my children are dying of it you must not come in go away so we hurried on through the plague-smitten street burdened with a new fear soon we saw a house on the riverside which looked absolutely empty the shades were up the windows open the doors stood ajar i hesitated plucked up my courage resolved that we must get to the waterside in some way in order to escape from the net of death which encircled us come i said let us try to go down through this house but cover your mouths we groped through the empty passageway and down the basement stair the thick cobwebs swept my face i noted them with joy for i thought they proved that the house had been deserted for some time and so perhaps it might not be infected we descended into a room which seemed to have been the kitchen there was a stove dimly visible at one side and an old broken kettle on the floor over which we stumbled the back door was locked but it swung outward as i broke it open we stood upon a narrow dingy beach where the small waves were lapping by this time the little day had begun to whiten the eastern sky a pallid light was diffused i could see westward down to the main harbor beside the heart of the city the sails and smokestacks of the great ships were visible all passing out to sea i wished that we were there here in front of us the water seemed shallower it was probably only a tributary or backwater of the main stream but it was sprinkled with smaller vessels sloops and yawls and luggers all filled with people and slowly creeping seaward there was one little boat quite near to us which seemed to be waiting for some one there were some people on it but it was not crowded come i said this is for us we must wade out to it so i took my wife by the hand and the child in the other arm and we went into the water soon it came up to our knees to our waists hurry shouted the old man at the tiller no time to spare just a minute more i answered only one minute that minute seemed like a year the sail of the boat was shaking in the wind when it filled she must move away we waited on and at last i grasped the gunwale of the boat i lifted the child in and helped my wife to climb over the side they clung to me the little vessel began to move gently away get in cried the old man sharply get in quick but i felt that i could not i dared not i let go of the boat i cried good-bye and turned to wade ashore i was compelled to go back to the doomed city i must know what would come of the parting of man from god the tide was running out more swiftly the water swirled around my knees i awoke but the dream remained with me just as i have told it to you End of a Remembered Dream by Henry Van Dyke